Hi everybody, I'm Laurie from Laurie's Mechanical Marvels and welcome to the Monday Club. It's Monday, it's Sunday, and the drunks are you. It's time for the Monday Club, featuring your host, Jennifer Kirk, with the help of Stubborn Monkey and a wizard called Ganda. Featuring the sounds of the Glassoid Symphony Orchestra and the musical stylings of Gordon the Music Maestro. Let's get ready to local! A big hello to you. So great to see you. I hope I find you well. It's Jenny Kirk here with the Cupboard Monkey. Hello. And uh, <laughs> it's Monday. It's <laughs> seven o'clock. What else could that mean but Monday Club goodness? So a big hello to Flamma Chairman 1, Harry Sedgwick, Francis Alexander, Stevie Hill, Hot Dog Pilot Andy, Egg Rider, Busby Junction, uh, Richard Swiderski, Patrick Ling, Alice Dent, Mike at Puddham Junction, Malcolm Moore, Robert Becking, Smallwood Junction, Harry Sedgwick, Mousehole Rail, Ham Shackleton, Valleys 56XX, Rick Morley, Blackpool Steve, Wham Gok, D.L. Warren, uh, Nigel Cole, Leslie Gilpin Railways, Women Model Railway, Lifestyle Unleashed, and Reuben Ashwell, Gone Loco, Belmont Junction, Jennifer Horton, uh, Ralph Davey, Southern Train Girl, Nigel Cole, Awesome Bricks, Tim's Model Railway and Different Videos, North with Dar, uh, Mel's, Larry W. Grant says a Dr. Pepper is nice, doing it's fine so in Dallas. Mm. Langton Road, Zach Farm with Joe Smith, 156 Andrew, DJK666, Retro Rambles, H&H &H Express, Model and Scale Trains, Chehalis Valley Rail Productions, Gary Lewis, Trains with Nick. It's great to see you all, and I hope I find you well. Now, today, Jenny, I have uh, two things for you. Yes, first we do all, have a sponsor. First of all, yes, congratulations on 20,000 subscribers. Well, thank you. And um, throughout today, we will refer to this as well. But yes, we've finally gone over 20,000 subscribers. Let's see if we can make it 20,000 to 100. Don't forget to tickle the like button. And if you're not subscribed, then do please, please, please consider subscribing and ring the bell to be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. And uh, I know a lot of people say, oh, what's your secret? How do you get big on YouTube? I don't know. They never let me in on the secret. If you do find out, please, please, please let me know because I've never worked it out. But today, we have our sponsor, Roka Prototype Models. The Monday Club comes in association with Roka Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy, and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safe Pack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocamodels.com and see the full range for yourself. And a big thank you to Roka Prototype Models for their continuing support for the channel. And certainly do go and check them out. They're over at their website. And uh, if you're based in the US as well, more so, uh, they've got a full range of superb US outline models for you available now. And I see James Petz is in. I do approve. It's great to see you. Um, it says the secret is probably bribing the YouTube algorithm with cake. Um, if it was that simple, then um, I'm sure that uh, we'd have done better. Like, come here, you go, YouTube algorithm. Mm, mm, come on, have a piece. Um, Are you trying to make a computer want cake? Yeah, that's it. It's like you know when people say, "I think your computer needs a cup of tea." I tried pouring it in through the vents. It didn't really work. Now, for some reason, the tumble of clowns are a bit nervous of getting close to the microphone. So we're going to have to... Um, oh! 
the tumble of clowns is passing by. I'm sure. Where's the one with the trombone? That There's does the, sound low. It, they seem uh, to be far away today. Perhaps they've uh, migrated. I don't know. We'll have to look into that. Yeah. Um, Mac Navi says, congratulations, Jenny and Zoe. Thank you so much. Jen, I have a question. Of course you have a question. Can you, you beatbox like it ain't no thing? <laughs> Turns <laughs> out, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Melchester <laughs> Model Railway suggests 20,000 clowns. Now that really would be... Don't some... give her ideas. Mm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and people, people do often ask me, about like how do you get big on YouTube? And it's I, I, in all honesty, it's if there's if I, a if I knew I'd do it. Um, if there was a special <laughs> formula, everybody would be big on YouTube. Um, I don't know what that formula is. Each channel, it seems to be something slightly different. But in all honesty, even I don't know what the winning formula is for this channel. Cause I'll tell you exactly what it is for a long-term uh, build of a channel. Mm -hmm. A good product well made is that why we're crashing and burning at twenty thousand <laughs> so no, just think of all the ones that are actually not here today gone tomorrow the ones that explode quick and then disappear when the next bit of fad comes along you mean all they're like 100 percent clickbait and nothing yeah. else don't don't go for that but go for the uh, ones that are long runners yeah your channel Philip DeFranco, things like that. Oh, don't I, compare me to Philip DeFranco. No, I'm He's long way run. better. <laughs> what I'm saying is long runners. Uh, the Escapist magazine with zero punctuation. Long yeah. runners. It, it, they have a set way of doing things. Yeah, but the thing and is... And they go and go and go. But zero punctuation on the Escapist. When the Escapist started, they had lot. it was like a magazine, like a comedy club thing. And there was yeah. all these different things, and I'm beyond uh, honest with you, Yahtzee and Zero Punctuation is the only one left. No, they're back. Some of the other ones, they have a, a turnover. People tend to get big uh, and then disappear because uh, they can only go for so long. But mm. a good product, well made, keeps going. A uh, big hello to John JMC, our resident maestro of putting sound in anything. If they can't get sound in it, then it's not possible to get sound in it. Dundee Road, great to see you. Uh, Retro Ramble says, I think you have to be consistent with uploading on a regular basis and have to be in it for the long haul. Yes. Absolutely, you've got to have a regular... Um, uh, why, are you pressing, why are you standing on my foot? Um, it's because I was trying to get you to shut up and then I forgot to move my foot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mike Finch, big hello to you. But yeah... Um, uh, essentially, you've got to have a schedule, which is one of the things you'll notice that, come what may, we <laughs> upload a video on Wednesdays and Fridays. Occasionally, we do extra ones. Um, and, yeah, it's a lot of work. Uh, and oh, my goodness, is it a lot of work? There's uh, yeah. two of us, and we still get burnout. Uh, absolutely. And 20,000 is kind of still very small fry. So let's make it big fry. Get your friends to subscribe and <laughs> manically tickle the like button. As long as it's an odd number of times, it still counts as a like. <laughs> uh, by the way, what's in the news today? I don't know. You're asking me like I know. Uh, we not had any news. A big hello to Stefan Svensson. A big hello. Hello, Stefan. Great to see you down at uh, Staffel Barn. No, no, that was um, Stefan Svensson is the um, uh, editor of Modiana Schwag's magazinette. You're thinking of uh, Sven van der Hart. Sven, that was who is I am so sorry. Uh, name, I am terrible with names and the names began with S. So I thought you were the same person. I don't know, but Sven, Sven van der Hart is here. Mac Navi is his uh, handle. But no, Stefan, it's great to see you in. I hope you're doing really well. And uh, we've got, uh, let's have a look down. Um, Leslie Gilpin Railway says, I gave up on specific days for publishing, but publish regularly. My consistency is in style. And I guess that does work as well. Mm -hmm. As long as you get content out. Um, and when people say that, oh, but this, this channel's just started. And well, how have they managed to get like... Like 180,000 views on a video. That's, I wish I knew. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. Sometimes the algorithm likes something. <laughs> yes. 
Usually, it's a girl with a low-cut top, with top of boobies on the show. Is that... Um, so me wearing a proper t-shirt has really been uh, holding my channel back, has it? Yeah. Right, well, now I know. I mu no, I must admit, when you see a channel that has next to no subscribers, next to no content, and most of the videos only have maybe like 20 or 30 views, and then suddenly they've got one with 180,000, it's when you look at the thumbnail, there's normally... Um, a lady Are you looking with... at my old news show here no. with that one particular video? No, there's normally like lady with low cut top on the thumbnail. I don't know, just an observation. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Jenny is I actually don't... talking about my channel. I used to do a news review before I started doing uh, retro gaming, <laughs> and I would get a hundred, maybe two hundred views a day, mm. except for one video where I was talking about a. A phone app that was Nude a scam. scanner, it yes. It claimed that it could see through clothes. Of course it could And couldn't. suddenly I had 130,000 views on, on one video. Yeah, and lots of people in the comments go, I came here for porn. Well, you shouldn't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, what have we got running? Well, we've got one of my favourite locomotives going round on the outside track. So I'm going to change the view just to show I it am, yeah. as it comes the... round. Well, as long as we don't miss it. I'm trying my best. <laughs> there it is. Beep Duchess beep. of Montrose, one of my all-time favourite locomotives. It's a Hornby Princess Coronation class. And um, it's just, it harks back to childhood memories, to be well, honest with you. I've got some you. news for you. There you go. Um, okay. Well, look, look back at the news. And um, we also have the exclusive Coronation wagons in N-Gage. An 009 from a Pico, uh, which really do look great, actually. We, yes. must, we must get some. They're a limited run, and I suspect that Pico are currently going hammer and tongs to get these made. Um, because if it's anything like the place where I do some occasional work, who happen to have in their product line a cushion which has a cover that's a union flag, then, um, yeah, orders have gone wild. Can't think why. Um, oh, Tim Maslin says, good evening. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, here he comes. A Monday clubber is never late, Toadow Wagons, nor is he early. early. He, he arrives, arrives precisely, precisely when, when he means, means to. to. Thanks, thanks, Gandalf. Gandalf. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to uh, say hello, Gandalf, there, but that's not that's not. And line. somebody said, um, says, I tried wearing a bikini, but it didn't seem to work. Um, I... I, I, I saw it as we were talking about something else but <laughs> ham shackleton says i can't picture craig wearing a bikini for subs especially if he won't sha shave his beard off <clears throat> i don't know you could get certain people going hey mind bleach mind bleach hey. <laughs> <laughs> um what else oh dominic Z, our kick line correspondent says jenny i found a dicky <laughs> toys kick line rc turbo racer last friday Alongside with a Dickie Toys Kickline RC single drive car. Oh, well can I done. just say one thing? Yes. Uh, as part of news. You said um, more than one thing. If you go to Rails of Sheffield and uh, happen to be taking part in their, their looking around and uh, perhaps buying things, then uh, enter the code Easter Treat at checkout, all capital letters, all one word, for 5% off. But that ends midnight tonight. I believe quite a few retailers have Easter sales on. I think TMC do. Um, I have a feeling Hatton's do as well. Um, uh, Dennis Christiansen says, Hello, hello, train lovers from Coscob, Connecticut. Hello. Coscob. Wow, that sounds a cool sounding name. That sounds like somewhere in Wales. There's, um, there's um, the Cobb in, uh, near Porthmadoc in North Wales. It's making me think of for some reason. Uh, DJK666 says we could get a tribunal of Gandalf, Dumbledore and Mustrum Ridkelly to do the late statement. <laughs> uh, Sarah Mustrum Ridkelly, Arch-Chancellor of the Unseen University. Sarah Davis says now all I can see is Craig wearing a bikini. Yep. I, you know, is, I don't, I'm not sure if Craig's here actually. So we shouldn't we, take the mic. We shouldn't take the mic. Craig is a lovely, lovely guy. And don't forget... You can also subscribe to his channel over at Iron Horse Railways. He's doing really well with a lot of great content, including guides on how to weather your wagons. Um, and he's getting into American modelling at the moment. There he is. There well, he is. His ears must have been burning. 
I know it's Rose says, evening all. Just got in to find a message in the chat about me wearing a bikini. What have I missed? Um, um, okay, the, the, the joke was um, that uh, Jen had found the, the trick to getting really, really big on YouTube, and it was to wear uh, low-cut tops. Yeah. Suddenly this turned into everyone having to wear bikinis and their thumbnails, uh, and they immediately point, someone thought decided of that you. you would try that. Yes, I'm not sure why you have this reputation, but uh, yeah. I am happy to say that uh, we have never had any indication <laughs> that Craig would be up for this. No, no, we have not. Uh, Trains with Nick says, I have a bunch of pre-orders at Rails, but sadly I had to send my Hellion Rustin 165DE back as the body fit was terrible and the model Aww. became very noisy whilst running in. I've seen a lot of posts about this. Now, I, I, I will I will um, prefix this with the caveat that I don't actually have one of these models, so I haven't looked at it firsthand, um, but I have seen a lot of people posting that for some reason the body doesn't seem to want to sit properly on the chassis um, and uh, this has been reported by in a few different places um, so I don't know what to make of that um, certainly I don't think I've not seen any uh, <laughs> Iron Horse Railway says I see <laughs> leaves chat forever oh I'm Aww. sorry come back all is forgiven it wasn't actually him who suggested wearing a bikini. It was somebody yeah, else. Yeah, it was someone else. Um, uh, by the way, I have heard that some pal bricks have been delivered. Yes, I have also been seeing that. Um, I don't know whether Rails is showing them as actually in stock at the moment. Well, this, yours is still on uh, pre-order. I'm just looking for... What about the triple packs? People have said that they're starting <laughs> to receive them. And if I change the camera angle then hopefully we'll pick up um and you can't really see them um where are they hiding just in front oh in fact you can in the center of your screen so over here these are the production pal bricks so there, there was my hand in shot that's quite a lean actually over there um so um those are the production pal bricks no not the greatest of shots to show them off it must be said um, but I have seen people um, uh, actually reporting that they've got these. Um, let's have a look. Uh, Richard Baker uh, says, Does anyone know if the new HM7000 decoders fit in the DAPOL loco locos in the smoke box? I don't know. At the moment, I'm trying to sort out a Next18 um, TXS decoder specifically for doing a video of will it fit and go through all of my next 18 equipped locomotives and try and actually sort out they're all still saying pre-order they are i suspect that they will fulfill all the pre-orders first and then they'll go on general sale if Probably, that makes yeah. sense i think that's normally how it works a uh, women model railway says tardis on the track to the left of screen behind the coach yes it is it's in the scrapyard Yes, I, I, I will verify. How on earth did you see that? With difficulty, but there it is. Da, da, da. Yeah, you and Richard Swiderski has spotted the TARDIS above the tunnel. <laughs> so let's just um, uh, change the shot. Let's um, try it off, please. Just so that um, the doctor has a chance to uh, re equip himself. Uh, John JMC says the next 18 is big, same size PCB board as the 8 pin. Yeah, um, I've heard this. Um, certainly, it's designed to fit into the TTA4s, I believe. And as Hornby actually, um, uh, I've said, it's like, well, it, it fits in our locomotives. Well, what more do you want? Yeah, well, why should we be held to blame because you can't fit it in another manufacturer's loco? loco? And part of the problem is the Bluetooth antenna is large. It is. And due to... It's a um, Yeah, but due to difficulties in getting components at the moment, they elected to go with an old school Bluetooth antenna, which does take up space, um, simply um, to get the product out there. And, and in it's time... And tested. Yeah, and uh, in time it will get smaller. But um, I do want to experiment with what locomotives it will actually fit in. And I'm going to say it probably fits in a fair amount of all gauge. No, but they don't have next 18 decoder sockets. This well, is what why we're not? This is what we're talking about. So 
Um, I think, actually, based on my experience of looking inside a Rapido 16XX pannier tank, I think it will fit in one of those. But I don't have a Next18 decoder, so I can't actually check that at the moment. In terms of the Daypole locomotives, um, I think it might actually fit in some of those. But again, I don't know. And the reason I think it might fit is because... I'll have a decaf coffee. Okay. Oh, cupboard monkey. He's like miming at me. No, oh, this is sign language. Thing, little, little guys, little Apparently, finger, little this finger is out, and then you do that. Sign uh, for, for, for tea for and Doctor Evil. Tea, Doctor Evil. <sighs> I'm trying to teach Jen because I, I'm going deaf and so is she. So tea, you drink as if you're drinking. Coffee, as if you're holding a mug. <laughs> Uh, no, not like that, like that. Oh, uh, all right, so like that. that as that. if you drink, yeah, as if you drink. Up your face as if you're drinking. Well, Coffee. Like this. <laughs> yeah, like I'm doing here. Coffee. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, oh, I'm... I... Tea. Right, okay, right. Um, John hey, James... things I have to do. Anyway, shut up and go and get the drinks. Okay. Michael Lanes has loved your feature on TT Gauge Pico Buildings. Thank you so much. Oh, thank that you. That was Cupboard Monkey's work. They are great, actually, those Pico ones. Yeah. Um, John JMC says we have the next 18 in TTA4 and 21 pin in the Daypole O gauge 08. And I must admit, actually, there's a lot of the Daypole O gauge models. The 21 pin decoders oh, actually, fit in really, really easy. Tape. They are DCC ready. I know they are, and that's what they're supposed to go into. So, that would be an extra thing to try for the video. Yes, Stick it would. One in a TT. Yes, yes, See it would. If it, uh, one of those sound things into an N gauge as well. Yes, and I will be trying the um, the Rapido N gauge class twenty eight as well. I think there will be some that it fits into. I know there will be others that it doesn't. So, for example, the 009 Baldwin from Backman. I don't expect it to fit in there. Is a little bit of a uh, tight fit, must be said. But I have managed in the Daypole, um, is it the D, the Daypole D class that was done with Daypole and Rails? I've actually got to stay alive in there with the decoder, so it may be that um, it fits. But I think it, it's it's the length, um, and I don't know how far back there is space for the decoder. Um, so certainly, it's a, a case of just you know trying and seeing. Um, Iron Horse Railways says Coffee Monkey. Absolutely. Vic Freak says regarding Hornby's next 18 decoders, they need to sort the app out first for Android phones. Says very cross and frustrated and floods of tears. And um, they are working on it now. Um, as I've said before, actually, when when we did the soundtracks review, um, one of the things that Soundtrack said to me up front was. There currently isn't an Android version of the app because it's a lot of work to do it. Um, because there's not Android as an umbrella term. And if you do an Android uh, version of an app, you actually need to code and test like about a dozen different variants for it all to work. And that's a lot of work. So when you compare one, maybe two, I think it is, for iPhone, or a dozen for Android and you know you think how big the market is for iPhones you're probably looking at around 45% of the market on iPhone you can do that like one bish bash bosh and then you work on the others they said to me about four weeks it's a bit of a, a guesstimate to be honest with you as well there's no hard and fast rule um, I know that um, there have been a few little things that have cropped up once the models have been released that they weren't necessarily aware of before the decoders were released. So, for example, there's an issue at the moment whereby people are using a kind of quirky, oh, actually, this might work feature on it. It's not a main feature, but it's the thing whereby you can use them on a DC layout and the idea was that you've just crank the DC power to max and excuse me and they'd work and I, I tested it on a gauge master model D briefly and in that brief moment it all seemed to work however there have been reports of people's decoders cremating themselves letting the magic smoke out 
when being used on DC. So they're not quite sure whether there's maybe been a change in Gage Master um, uh, controller design, whether there's other things at play here. But the current recommendation until further notice is to use the um, uh, something like the they do a like a 15 volt wall adapter specifically designed to run the decoders uh, rather than run the risk of popping them um, and yes there will most likely be DC controllers that are absolutely fine but until they've done a little bit of um, uh, of research they're basically saying uh, don't risk it um, and yeah, Ironhorse Railway says, oh dear, that's not great news. But what you've got to remember is that this was never meant to be a main feature. The main feature of these decoders is controlling your stuff on Bluetooth and having really easy wireless, wire-free control. And one of the main things as well, and I'm going to be doing a video on setting up ABC Shuttle on these. And yes, they do support ABC Shuttle. And as a demonstration of this, um, at some point, you will see a Class 56 shuffling up and down. In fact, it's just coming into view now. That has a TXS decoder in and is using the DCC Concepts uh, shuttle zones uh, without any modification to them. So um, it's great. It does mean that you can run it with sound and they have like a dynamic drive with the sound where it will the sounds will automatically play all the spot sounds in response to what the locomotive is doing which is particularly good on an abc shuttle um so um when you come to set that up and you go to the cv editor i know cvs are normally like blooming witchcraft it's like well you have to find the cv that does this no clues you just have to guess which one it is based on a vague clue in the manual if you can find one and then it's like you have to add up if you want this and this and this like bit 12 four six and it's like i don't want to add up numbers and still not have a clue this do, this just has like a you click on a cv and it goes do you want to change it to this, 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 or this? And it tells you in a lot of the cases of the CVs, it tells you what it does. I love particularly the lighting um, function. So it's like, I actually want a Mars light or a gyro light or a ditch light. On the lighting function CVs, it tells you, like, click this box if you want a Mars light. Click this box if you want a strobe light on this lighting function. It's like, hallelujah. I have never been able to get Firebox Flicker set up properly. Never, ever. Even having the manual, never been able to do it. The app for the um, Hornby Bluetooth, the HM7000, it tells you how it works and it just works first time. Um, yeah, John JMC, I know you'd find them easy, but I don't like working out the like, oh, if I add up byte 12 with byte 4, and it, I don't understand it, okay? I never understood computers very well, and I know I'm not in a minority, and that's what this is about. Yeah, nerd side represent, I know there's people who find it dead easy, but the majority of us don't. And that's what this app does, is it makes it accessible to everybody. Can I just give out a quick... Oh, hold on, I'm, in, I'm full flow, wait for me to finish. Go on then. I liken this, and it's what I said in the review, it's like that that moment where um, for people of a certain age you went from using DOS on a computer to using Windows and it's like that kind of paradigm shift. Suddenly Stop the computer up. just did what you wanted it to. You didn't need to know all the commands. You didn't no need to know how to move files uh, up the, um, the file tree. You didn't need to actually edit batch files to make things work. Suddenly, it was easy. And this is like, um, th this is what this is like for me. It's that paradigm shift. It's the moment that we go from using DOS 6.22 to using Windows 95. That, it, it's as simple as that. John JMC says, my next YouTube video. Thanks for the idea. I don't know what he's on about. What have I missed? Doing CVs. Ah. 
But yeah, I mean, um, you could do no worse than do a video simply on how do I check, what CVs do I change and to what to do lighting functions is one of the things that certainly US modelers are much more clued up when it comes to lighting functions because uh, you know when you look at it at uh, US uh, railroads they've got like the flashing wigwams when they're they're approaching crossings you know they got Mars lights they got ditch lights all of these different things so US railroad modelers do use these things a lot more but oh careful um, she just kicked the table with the coffees on. Um, Better than kicking the bucket. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> um, James Pet says, like going from DOS to Windows 95. I remember that Windows 95 crashed often. <sighs> oh, there's always some smart ass, isn't there? Um, um, but um, yeah, so US outline railroaders are probably a little bit more clued up, but Firebox Flicker is a big deal. And um, it, it, it's. It's um, you sorry you're distracting me there. Um, Firebox Flicker is now a big deal, and it'd be nice to know how to set it up quite easily. Big hello to Wardle Road, who's late. Congrats on 20k. Maybe one day I'll get there. Evening all and the Growler Blackwood N gauge layout as well. I think is late. A Monday club hour is never late, Toto Wagons. Nor is the alley. He writes precisely when he means to. Thanks, Gandalf. Thanks, Gandalf. Uh, oh, welcome. George says, I fitted a Bluetooth decoder to my evening star. Waiting for the app on Android now, but I've bought a small tablet to run it instead of using my phone. And yeah, um, mm. that is another way of doing it. Yeah, that's a good thing. It gives you a nice big display. You'll be good with it. Yeah, John JMC, aha, but... So CV33 for F0 forward and CV34 for F0 reverse. Guess I'm the smart ass. <laughs> no, you're not. Because what number are you putting into them? It's all very well to say which CV, but the mystery is often what number do you write to that CV to get the effect that you wanted? And Every yes, single one in turn until you find it. And Martin Searsma, Windows 98 was great. Absolutely. Windows 98 SE. Because um, SE brought in the... Um, XP was best. Oh, yeah. Um, XP Pro, once you'd ripped its guts out and got it working how you wanted, was the best because it allowed you to access hard drives larger than, I think it was 2.1 gig. Um, it allowed you to access um, a lot more things, plus full USB 2 support. Now, Windows 98 SE brought in with it... Um, um, I think that that's the one that brought in kind of USB 2 support, but it did struggle. And the the memory limit of, um, I think it was half a gigabyte for Windows 98, became a nuisance. The file size limit as well made it what very difficult. What do you need difficult. a file size change for? Um, for when 64K you're burning... is good enough for anyone. Shut up, no, 640k, your wally brain. No, I'm talking about 8 bits. 64k is good enough for anyone. Okay. Where's uh, the back? Madden Steam Railway says, Good beep, evening, beep. Jen and Cupboard Monkey. Nice to hear Gandalf. Was that someone being late? <laughs> A Monday Clubber is never late, Toto Wagons. I keep telling you this. They're not early either. They arrive precisely when they mean to. Thanks, Gandalf. You're very welcome. We've got lots of cake downstairs because no, we're we celebrating oh. 20,000 subscribers. Although Alex Dent, controversial, says Windows 10 for me. <laughs> um, Iron Horse Railway says usually it's one or zero. Yes, but there's like about 10 different lighting effects you can pick, pick from. <laughs> Lifestyle Unleashed says, indeed, congrats on 20,000. We'll be so pleased when I get over 1,000. I'll be happy when we get over 100 mm. on Jenny Curb 2. Uh, Iron Horse Railway says, Windows SA. What was SA? South America. It was my, my favourite version. It was the localised Mexican version. So how was it different? It was Spanish. So, hola, que tal? <laughs> um, Brian Platt says, a few days later. Um... So, Jen, has there been any other news? Not really. Oh, trains, kits, etc. says Vista. Ha-ha! <laughs> no, not Windows Vista. To oh. be fair, there are some uh, people who pointed out, quite rightly, that Vista does have a version 
that everyone liked. And it's called Windows 7. Oh, right, okay. Windows 7 is Vista. Okay, Richard Swiderski says cake. Yes, please. Um, John JMC says if you want front and auxiliary one, you put five. See, this is it. You're getting you're getting confusing with this. Really confusing. Um, Sarah Davis says finally logged in on my laptop. I'm thinking a reinstall is needed at the weekend. Congrats on 20k. Thank you so much. Mac Navi says even if you can easily program with Bluetooth, you still don't know which output cable the functions are connected to in the model so you'll have the same problem but you can um, you can change cvs on the fly whilst the locomotive is running so you can oh. simply look at what the lights do iron uh, horse what's he done now windows sa is windows sa <sighs> <laughs> Matt Kirk oh, says, dude. stumbled on this IT channel by mistake. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we're normally about uh, trains and, and locomotives, hence the stuff we that's going on. We got bogged down in, in the, the black hole that <laughs> is CV editing. But yes, um, the, the, the app makes it really easy. And um, in all honesty, with it, it's the ability to uh, just change things on the fly. So not just lighting functions where you can simply look and go, is it doing what I want? No. Change to the next setting. Oh, yes, it is. Rather than back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to the Jeez. program. No, thank you. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, but um, when it comes to things like setting... Um, uh, uh, oh, it says Melchester Model Railway says, you've got another channel, Jenny. You kept quiet about that. We didn't, but a JK2... So, um, Zoe, through the Game Hammer Classic Gaming, has shared the link. Do please head on over to Jenny Kirk 2 on YouTube. It's our second channel, and it's a little bit more laid back. There's going to be a lot more in the way of different content to do with trains. Well, it's still about locomotives and uh, the rolling stuff, but we're talking about different scales. We're talking about it from uh, a very much a newcomer channel. Yeah. We're, we're talking about new projects like building an end cage layout in a box and things like that. Mm. <laughs> Sarah Davis says, have you tried turning off and turning on the CV address? Um, oh, my word. Mark Wilson says, send some money on PayPal. Congrats to Thank 20 so subscribers. Thank you so much. You, you uh, guys are so generous. Oh, you and guys. you know what? Jen and I... Oh, thank you so much, Mark Wilson. It says, a pound for every thousand subscribers. So thank oh, you thank so you. much. <laughs> As opposed to, oh, could you send a little bit back? I actually sent you a pound for every subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> so, but thank you so much for your generosity. That is is incredibly generous of you. But, yeah, it really is. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone, because Jen and I... Uh, we always say this we're incredibly humbled that you guys join us every week for a <laughs> show but also incredibly incredibly grateful that uh, you subscribe and let us do this stuff that you enjoy so much absolutely Francis Alexander says see you next Monday Jenny and Zoe you take care it's been great having your company and don't forget that you can also catch up later with absolutely. anything that you missed Mac Navi says, but I admit BT control has benefits, uh, as they said before. So it's the same problem as with CV programming. You just enter another number to try and see what gets activated. Yeah. It is, but it allows you to do it on the fly whilst the locomotive is running. So if you want to set acceleration, deceleration, top voltage, start voltage, you can see the effect immediately without having to program it and then put it back on the track, get it running, see yes, if it works. It changes and it's, on the fly. It gets rid of the back and forth, back and forth. Gary B says Mrs. B is off for a bath, but she's still laughing about the T Doctor Evil gesture. That's right, it's yeah. T Doctor Evil. T Doctor Evil. One million dollars. <laughs> Inflation's been a bit severe. I did love that scene. <laughs> we, we want a, a million dollars. Uh, 
Sir, our annual turnover for the legitimate side of our business was 10 million in the last quarter alone. <laughs> oh, throw me a bone here, people. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are we being evil now? <laughs> it's far more profitable to just sit here. Yeah, it's far more profitable to just own <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> It just showed that actually that um, the um, the people who owned Starbucks actually had a sense of humour because they were like, apparently um, uh, the production company went to them and went, don't suppose you'd let us do this? And they went, <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think they did ask somebody else first who just told them to take a hike. Oh. But Starbucks were like, like, yeah, why not? So I have more time for Starbucks because they went, yeah, everybody thinks we're evil. This will be funny. Um, Lee D. Holden says, good evening all. Just landed back from York Model Railway Show. That sounds like he's late. Gandalf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, Thanks, Gandalf. Gandalf. Uh, absolutely. Um, John Guy says, bye to you all and well done. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, uh, don't forget that, of course, you can catch up with anything you miss. Uh, after the show, it does become a regular video and you can watch and re-watch all of the goodness. And uh, please, please, please consider tickling the like button, sharing the video to social media. Do let people know. Now we're celebrating 20,000 subscribers. I don't know how it happened. It, there's there's probably some mistake. And they'll go, really sorry, we gave, gave you subscribers. Um, gave somebody else's subscribers to you. But um, <laughs> absolutely, it's great to have you all aboard for this celebration. Oh, so uh, is there any more news? Uh, Stevie Films has received four Hornby BR VDA vans. Clearly through the box when uh, oh it's gone off the top. You guys are kind of typing so quick. Uh, clearly through the box window. One has a broken handbrake handle with no damage to the box. So much for quality control at the factory and the model shop. Unfortunately, you do sometimes see detail having fallen off. Uh, it is a pain in the bottom, but it does happen, unfortunately. And um, Ruben Ashwell says TARDIS in the front truck of the train hauled by the Class 25. Is it? Ooh. Uh, what, what's this? It says, be the first to receive Hellion UK. Uh, no, the news underneath. Two um, minutes ago they launched that. So Hellion has just posted that uh, about the O-Gage Class 55s, uh, 10 liveries available, covering standard BR Blue, Finsbury Park's famous racehorses with white cab windows, Retro BR Green D9000 and 55002. Um, and um, there's far more to these new models than just a lick of paint. We've redesigned the model from the ground up, reshaped and improved the body, adding new details and upgraded the chassis to our latest plug and play DCC specification. Um, this, The plug and play DCC specification, it, it's a double edged sword, I would say. It's going to have the XL DCC interface, but certainly when I was looking for an XL decoder, you could only get sound decoders, and they were incredibly expensive and difficult to get due to the processor shortage. Um, and there was a huge, huge gap in the market for a manufacturer bringing out a non-sound XL decoder. Mm. Leslie Gilpin Railway says that they're 16,540 behind us. You'll get there eventually. I can remember being really pleased when we went over three and a half thousand. Um, I remember that being a big deal, you know. I remember being uh, a big deal when uh, we got a first nice comment. Yeah. I, I remember when we first got monetized and it was like, really? You want to give us some money? And it's like, here you are, here's a penny. <laughs> it, took, it took us about a year to get the first royalty check. It did. We, we started out... Uh, mm. Yeah. I can remember I remember celebrating the first 50 videos. Oh, it's our 50th video. Um, Mark Wilson says, bought my first American sound fitted loco, a Burlington Northern and Santa Fe SD75i, dipping my toe in the US scene. Now, I'm really looking forward to what you produce. I've seen your Swindon, um, Swindon erecting shop diorama, seen your Birmingham New Street and your Stewart's Lane. There's some amazing work from you. 
and um, I'm incredibly um, looking forward to seeing what you do with the American scene. Flyma Chen once has 1,400 videos now. Yeah, we kind of, we're probably one of the more prolific YouTubers that are out there. We've certainly done far we more try videos our best than to most. Keep going and just oh, we keep do it because we love it. Yeah. Big hello to J94 just arrived there. Hi Jenny and Zoe and everybody else. Well, just arrived there. there. Just arrived. I'm waiting for Gandalf. Is he there? A Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons. Nor is he early. He, he arrives, arrives precisely, precisely when, when he means to. Means to. Thanks, Gandalf. Gandalf. Um, so. Christy Duke says, TARDIS by the side of the small tunnel with black stuff round it. That's not black stuff. Those That's are trees. Those are deep green trees. They're, they're evergreen <laughs> trees. Yes. A big hello to Marin49. Great to see you in as well. Sue at Putnam Junction. Um, we're talking about Scoony models. I have heard of that one. Right. DJK666 um, says, Isn't there a serious word salad letter from the IRS which says very little if you monetize on YouTube? Yeah, but you can register as an overseas person and it sorts most of it out. Yeah, you basically tell them. Not in America, Wallies. Um, so right anyway, I, I did start earlier on talking about what's running, and then I'm just going to change the camera angle. What well, again? Yeah, I am. That is why we have multi-camera angles. So hopefully we'll catch some of the stuff going around. Right. So we've talked about Duchess of Montrose, one of my favourite locomotives, because the childhood connection with my Hornby Double O one. And then we've also got the Crane Train. Now these two cranes that are going round. And these are ones which I've just filmed a, a video actually on Wednesday. We're going to have a, a bargains video. <laughs> you didn't see that coming. But um, TMC have got a mega sale on at the moment. And the highlights for me are those two cranes. Two different versions of the Batman Breakdown crane. Um, which is a fabulous model but at 50% off RRP. Which makes them a hundred and it's like pennies under one hundred and twenty-five pounds for a fully functional crane, and they've got the Southern Railway grey and the GWR grey, but it's quite an understated livery, and it looks to actually be the Ransoms and Rapier house livery. As in, if you bought a crane and didn't specify what colour you wanted it, this is the colour they came in. Um, so actually, you could get away with using them not just on um, uh, the Southern Railway. Or GWR, but also LNER, LMS if you want to stretch uh, Rule 1, but also BR as well. They're very understated. And, um, you know, if you've got an industrial layout, it's something that you think, well, you know, you could imagine under Big Steel Works them having something like this. Yes, 57305 Northern Princess. Oh no, me baggins! <laughs> Absolutely, but they we do have. We need that on a, a, a button for the We do need board. that on a soundboard. Um, but um, <laughs> they've got the £124.96, and the price you see is the price you pay. Because the other little quirk of TMC is that it's free postage over £100. So if you order a crane, it's free postage. <laughs> so, you know, it, you know, the savings keep on coming. Yes. So um, I, bought, I bought the southern one. And then I, I, I said that I was going to make a video and TMC went, Would you, do you want the other one to show people the other livery? And they've sent the other one. So that's what's going round. And actually, I would say, if you can that's afford it. That's actually warping, if you put that down. On is there. it? Yeah. It'll unwarp because as the, um, as the um, heat leaves. But... Um, uh, you, you went and derailed my train of thought. You were on about the second crane. But as you can see as it goes round, it looks really good together, the two of them. Yes. And um, I'm, I'm falling in love with that, that breakdown crane train. Um, and, My uh, favourite crane is Frasier, says Zion Hoss. Uh, oh, the <laughs> cranes <laughs> of Maine have got your brain. No, uh, you know what this means? Yes, the cranes in Maine have got your living brain. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, Frasier, actually, one of my favourite sitcoms ever. <laughs> There's a couple of series where it does start to slide off the boil. Daphne's when, mother turning yeah, up. Yeah, Daphne's up. mother is not a strong character. But Niles and Frasier, that chemistry, certainly in the first um, five, six series, really, really so great good. sitcom. So good. What was that noise? That was uh, a calendar event telling me that it's uh, Bank Holiday Monday. Really? 
Yes. Oh my word. Um, Brian Bell. Oh, can I also say? Hold on. Brian Bell has very generously sent twenty pounds on the PayPal.me. Oh, thank thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, it's, it's just really, really kind of you. That's what it was on about. Oh right. So it's reminding us now. Yes. Oh, well, how helpful. Yes. Um. <laughs> Steve's oh oh gay says Larry fifty is still an achievement. Yeah, YouTube is hard, and I think that um, I th a lot of people don't quite realise how difficult it is to get. So I think a lot of people do realise if you anyone if you who's produce tried content, to put a, put a channel up and tried to make it on YouTube. And the hardest the part is starting. Is. The first few subscribers getting noticed yeah. at all, getting seen, is when really you're really content. hard. Oh my goodness, um, is that? Which is why I keep saying I am eternally grateful to all of you, mm. because my goodness, the the amount of absolutely uh, the amount of stuff that we've been able to do because people are supporting the channel is just it's shocking. Absolutely. But anyway, the cranes um, we got that being pulled by twenty four oh eight one, which is actually the first ever Backman Class twenty four release from way way back. I think that came out either in two thousand or two. 2001 it was either 2000 or 2001 um and it's um still going strong i love that model i fell in love with the class 24 through that model um and it's got a few other bits and pieces on the back including those ballast cleaning coaches which kerno model center were doing at an amazing 17.99 each for a full spec modern tooled mark one on the DCC shuttles, we've got a Hornby Class 56, which is TXS decoder fitted. That's the Bluetooth decoder currently running in DCC mo uh, mode, um, but just proving that it will work quite happily. If you've got DCC Concepts ABC shuttles, then it will work quite happily um, on, on those, and it is doing just that. I've also got a Daypole Class 73 on the super long 16 ton coal hopper train. And there are two MEOs, which are the 24 and a half ton coal wagons. In there, there's two of those, all the rest are 16 tonners. That is also TXS fitted, currently running on DCC mode. Um, yeah, people saying Fraser's coming back. I'm not sure that it's going to work um, because. I think that um, David Hyde Pierce, who plays Niles Crane, isn't coming back. Don't know about any of the others. And the father, um, the actor who played it, actually passed away. Um, so I'm not quite sure whether it's going to be um, a runaway success or whether the, the characters have run their course and it will feel a lot like Blackadder back and forth, which I felt kind of ruined the Blackadder genre. Mm. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Marin49 says, Congratulations to everyone who has subs, even if it's only one. Absolutely. Trains, yeah. kits, etc. says, I never asked for a sub or expected one, so getting to 1,140 was easy because I never actually tried. Don't expect and you don't get let down. Just enjoy it and you will never make a penny. Um, let's see, with me, I never set out to be a YouTuber. And it kind of happened. I had a YouTube account. If you go and look at my account and it says I've been there for something like 13 or 14 years. But you'll notice that my earliest video is only from about 11 or 12 years ago. And the reason for this was that to be able to tickle that like or um, to leave a comment on a video, you had to have a, uh, an account. I think you still do. So I made my account simply to be able to watch videos and leave a comment. And then uh, Zoe was was um, trying to be uh, a news YouTuber and it was doing quite well. But you were, <laughs> I mean, show a sign of the times, you wanted practice on making videos. So you'd yeah. kind of, I, I can remember, we'd film at the radio studio and um, we'd film behind the scenes on the radio show that I was doing at the yeah. time. I had a Saturday morning radio show and we'd just film film the behind the scenes with like the, the quack rap with quacky ducky and stuff. Yeah, guess the tune that quacky ducky is quacking. Uh, and that's actually the origin of the, um, the rubber monkey uh, thing. 
<laughs> which became <laughs> Cupboard Monkey. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, James Petz, Jennifer Kirk, the accidental YouTubist. Absolutely. <laughs> and it just kind of, we put up a, I can remember, there was a single video of me showing showing my trains, which at the time was stored in a big chest. We should watch that. No, we shouldn't. We should play that on the show tonight. No, it was really bad. I'm uh, going to put a poll up for everyone who wants no, to see no. it. <laughs> uh, Effingham says, evening all. That implies that they arrived with, with, with lateness. A Monday clubber is never late to do he wagons, around, nor it? is he early. He arrives precisely when he needs to. Thanks, Gandalf. Uh, March West Junction TMD. Uh, great to see you. Up well and onwards. It says, took me four years to hit 300 as well. But I just make vids that make me smile with little care for subs. That's how you kind of were at the start. And I can remember distinctly hitting three and a half thousand subs. Um, that was at the point that I did Biggest Little Railway. Oh, yeah. And I remember thinking, gosh, I appear to have quite a lot of subs. And at the time it was, but now it isn't, if you know what I mean. Because um, back then, uh, I mean, some of the other YouTubers, I remember Charlie Bishop didn't even have 10,000 subs back then. And even um, the Great Carpet YouTuber um, only had like about 25, 20... Um, 28,000 subs. I remember the big train YouTuber was into City 82 and they only had about 45,000 subs. And just thinking that that was enough to get him flown out to uh, Google's headquarters yeah, for it was, tour. It was different days and it certainly really was. if you were that big when YouTube monetized you could actually make a living out of it. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's weird to see um, how YouTube has developed. And you know, I remember YouTube before monetization was a very different beast because people were there because they enjoyed what they're doing. It was oh much more goodness. creative. The, the world of Wheezy like Waiter. Wheezy Waiter equals three. Mika Kitty. Uh, breaking NYC. All that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they were great. And they were doing it the because Flop it was Brothers, fun. Yeah. Who have now moved on to other stuff. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, neck at Bletchton High Level. You. You know who I mean. Um, <laughs> uh, ooh, um, I'm going to close the poll in uh, one minute. So Matt Toman get... says, I want to see early videos of Jenny. They're there <laughs> if you look for them. If you they can are. beat YouTube trying to hide from you, uh, hide them from you, then they are there. And, yeah, Intercity uh, 82 is the name we don't hear a lot these days. He took a break, didn't up he? Well and almost, yes. Um, and... Um, I know, I know that um, it had some personal reasons, and I'm not going to talk about them because it's well, not my not. place. It's, it's not our place to talk about. But it. certainly, Intercity 82 was like the original train YouTuber. But um, for reasons, he he stopped. He did try and make a little bit of a, a comeback, um, but it didn't really seem to quite work. Um, and to I think, to be honest with you, we'll stop. we'll all be here when he come, decides to come back. Yeah. It, it's not like he can't. Mm, yeah, I think he, he, he. I think he lives in Crew somewhere like that. So be nice to talk to him. On yeah, their, maybe their we channel. should get. Maybe we should get him on as a guest. That'd be yeah. quite nice. Um, and yeah, Charlie now? Chimp says it's a shame Intercity eighty two hasn't made a video for three years. Oh right. Um, should we all watch Jenny's first train video? Yes, ninety five percent. No, four percent. How does that work? Because that only adds up to ninety nine percent. Well, one percent clearly didn't vote. <laughs> yeah, but well, well, but I, I, who was the four percent? It went. No, I don't want to see it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be disappointed in a minute, then, aren't we? <laughs> oh dear! Right. Anyway, um, when the chat comes back, <laughs> oh, is it me or is it getting a bit warm up? It here? is getting a bit warm up here. So it's I'm, not just you. I'm going to put. Oh, that is refreshing. Um, I'm going to put the air conditioning on down here. Okay. Ah. Oh. Lifestyle Unleashed says, My Enwins Motors YouTube channel is not far over 500 subscribers. I have been at that for over five years. Lifestyle Unleashed has under 200. But I'm grateful for every single one. And that's Absolutely. how I am as well. If you're, if you're grateful for Ooh, what, what you've got, that? then you won't ever be disappointed. Oh, you made all, all the stuff go I'm really sorry. Smart. No, 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 no. A, da, 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 da. Yeah, the poll has spoken, says Chahat. Whoa, that's a bit big. You want it further down? Yeah, you make it one smaller. Okay, how's that? Uh, Wixton Junction by Horn Hornby Hall. Big hello to you. Great to see you, and I hope I find you well. They're late. 
<laughs> a Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, Gandalf. Thanks, Gandalf. Um, I was actually going through what's running. So um, we got to the Class 73 and the very, very long coal train. And then um, the class at Hornby Class 56, I said before, is doing the, uh, the, the shuttle shuffle. And then I've got two Class 25s, both from Backman, doing the other two ABC shuttles. And I've got a Class 24-1 from Backman doing the innermost, innermost. Skipsy Train says good evening, everyone. Sorry I'm late. A Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons. You're all making me get very, 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 uh, losing my voice time. You know what I mean. Nor are they early. They arrive precisely when they mean to. Thanks, Gandalf. Gandalf. Ham Shackleton says on the subject of cranes, I have a pre-order at Rails that has been pending for three years. Still no sign of it being released. It's the standard Cowan Sheldon 15-ton crane, LMS Wellingborough 243. Is that the Oxford Rail one? Gosh, has it been that long? Oh, and this is like... It's three minutes. Endure it. Can we put it on half uh, volume? Let's go. Oh, this is like, look at how young I look. Is this the old house? This is the first video you ever did, yes. This is our old house. Here we go. Okay. Hello, I, um, I'm here today. How young? Um, this is lovely antique oak chair. <laughs> I inherited this from my grandmother. Uh, it's, it's very old, actually, um, I believe. Um, I, know, I could be wrong on this, so open to correction. But it dates back to 1930s, 1940s. It's made, uh, again, I, I'm told, from wood that was salvaged from old sailing ships that were being broken up. The uh, furniture makers uh, in Hull were next door to the ship's breakers yard. So I think what happened was the old... How long is this rubbish? Three minutes. Uh, ...would come in to, at the end of their life to be broken up and any wood that was salvageable would be used by furniture makers, probably amongst other people. Oh, it's made <laughs> items of furniture, so this wood could have been all the way around Cape Horn, um, out to Australia and India, and it could be very well travelled. Uh, but I use it now um, to store Mother Railway equipment. As you can see, it's, it's quite full <laughs> and just sorting through. We're, we're going to be moving house. So, um, I've been talking about the furniture more than anything else. Right, come on, get this, get this hokey rubbish off the TV. I tend to model the 1970s to 1980s period. This doesn't fit with that. Uh, this is a model of a wagon that's probably 1920s or 1930s. Uh, but I, you know, I sometimes I'll, I'll see things and I just really like them. And there's something about this wagon that I really do like. Uh, the colour of it is, is very, very nice. So occasionally I will buy things that are outside of my time period. And there's a few other bits and pieces here as well. Come on, get this like rubbish off. These, this... Um, one Wait a minute, it, it seems longer, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's boring. Okay, really do you like want to stop? Room yes, room I do. Then press the button. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, yeah, okay. So we're, we're going to bail out from that. So uh, apparently you were very uh, I was soft-spoken soft and very formal. So how's that? How, how, are, you, how are you feeling Can I just say, that? didn't my face look good without the pounds of fat that it carries around now? <laughs> I've got a piggy face now. Mm. Uh, but uh, yeah, so shy and quiet, says Iron Horse Railways. Yes, uh, and of course, if you use the kind of uh, very... Very breathy Very voice. breathy, wispy voice. And yes, I used to be a lot posher. Then and then course, I met this one and they just all went too far. I don't have to try anymore. But it's funny, actually, because um, certainly younger people in the media do tend to be a lot posher. And then, as as we get older, it's like, we oh, just I let ducks. it. Yeah. <laughs> ah, <I eat. laughs> All right, square. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you don't have to tell us that, Jen. Gandalf is definitely not rubbish. He's the most appealing Star Wars character. That is true. 
That's Madden Steam Railways. And DJK666, I recognise that ICI wagon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and Leslie Gilpin Railways. Jen always gets annoyed definitely, when I call them icky. Yeah, definitely a BBC <laughs> accent. Yes. Well, you were trained there, weren't you? Uh, trains with Nick says, has the Class 07 gone through osmosis and duplicated, or is my vision going a bit blurred and double? Um, now double, I've, got, double I'm, I've got seven double Class double, double 07s, vision. and this is just two of them. Um... <laughs> DJK666 says, I've got a few pounds of fat about my own person nowadays. I made it with pies and chips. That's funny because yeah. I think that's how I made mine as well. Yeah. Sausages. It's nice to be a self-made person, isn't it? Yeah, and going to the dogs. Absolutely snip of a girl. Um, I, I'm trying to think, how old would I have been there? Well, we can find out. I mean, it's not hard. I'm trying to think. I'd probably be about 28. I'm going to guess at 28, maybe 29. I think you were about 54. Uh, only in pent-up cynicism. <laughs> Matt Tobin says, Jenny, I love the way you speak now. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you, you're very... Go find it. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I worked on radio, so I had a, a, a BBC accent. Um, my original accent was actually quite broad Boltonian, which is a bit like Mancunian. Hey, up, Chuck. I can't <laughs> do it anymore. Right, so... Um, that was... The 23rd of February, 2011. No, 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 no. That, that is the video that we just watched. No, because we... Oh, that's just before we moved house. So yeah. how old would I... Oh, right, so I would be over 30. I'd be like 31. Gosh, I was about 31. Um, but I look about 20. Um, and then in October of 2011, we did the first one where you were building a lift-out section on Bolton Trinity Road. I think we renamed that one afterwards. It just happened to be what I was doing um, and you filmed it, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry BVR, I've just seen that, says patting his tummy. I spent a lot of money building this extension. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I like that. Iron Horse Railway says, Chip Lord. <laughs> yes, I think we've all had, uh, yes, We've all, like, we've all met the Taco King. Yeah. <laughs> it's when people come up to you and go, oh, when is it due? And it's like, not unless the father is called Mr. Kipling. And he but it was exceedingly good. good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trains with Nick says, the Class 07 reminds me of how the Ruston 165 could have turned out. Alas, I still only own a single Ruston at present. Rails, to their credit, didn't want to send a replacement as they'd all had issues. Yet yeah, there does appear to have been some assembly issues with the, the Ruston, which is an absolute shame because the, um, the Class 07 is pretty much perfect. Mark Wilson says, was it before you opened the cupboard and found Gandalf and the monkey? Going, here you are, we've got chips, come on in. I, like, I am trying to lose a bit of weight. I found it. Yeah, James Pett says, I approve of Mr. Kipling. <laughs> yes, he is exceedingly good. Um, oh, my word. Thank you so much to John oh Copping. Says, apologies, need some cheese and biscuits, otherwise known as Ding Dong Dairy Lee on High. Congratulations on the big numbers. Very kindly sent us £20 on the Super Chat. So thank you so much thank for you your very generosity. Much. Um, and uh, that, I, I, I'm always blown away at people's generosity. Thank you so much for that. Um, trains, kits, etc. says, what you need is a horrific stomach condition that robs you of the ability to eat and means you never gain weight. That's the life. No, we don't want that. No, no. That, th that sounds... Mm. It's those people who can eat whatever they want and never put on a pound of weight. There's a guy um, who I've done work with when I worked on the films and stuff, and he always used to moan that he couldn't put on weight. And I felt like throttling him as he was, like, piling in a doner kebab and crisps and cake. And he's like, it doesn't matter what I do, I can't seem to put on any weight. Well, fair enough. Uh, and it's like... Uh, give my regards to your tape one. Yeah, <laughs> and all I could think was, well, I can give you the weight of a steel toe cap boot up your bottom. Uh, Martin Searsmith says, Jenny, I started watching your channel because you had the gumption to build a layout outside. Yes, and this year we're hoping to revisit the uh, uh, exterior outdoors railway. Nice. I really want to see we that. We are going to revisit that. And actually, the um, Hornby uh, HM7000 Bluetooth decoders are giving mm. me a little bit of an impetus 
Because I think that's going to be the perfect way to control Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Alex Dent says, I've got to go now. I'm not here next Monday. And congrats on your 20,000 subscribers. You really kept your channel alive. I'll catch you later. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You take care. Thanks for coming along. See you later. And James Petz, yes, being plump is better than being unhappy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Although you have an amazing figure. I must admit, every time I meet you, I'm quite jealous because you have a really great figure. Um, Vic Freak says, I'm waiting for the new weight loss injections. That's my excuse. I've got a really good figure as well. Mm. It's just under layers and layers of fat. And Chris the Duke absolutely says, no, don't get a stomach condition. That's a curse. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Alan Reynolds of Buckland Junction, a.k.a. PVA J Cloth. Alan says, oh, sugar, I'm late. I'm busy in the loft and lost track of time. They're late. <gasps> A Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Absolutely. Thanks, Gandalf. Thanks, Gandalf. You're welcome. <laughs> Iron Horse Railway says, yes, Zoe's origin story is remarkably similar to that of Super Ted, but for copyright reasons, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> my origin story is very, very simple. Uh, my parents uh, collected all of the special tokens on the back of uh, um, uh, special packets of shredded wheat and then sent them off in the post along with a, a bit of cash for postage and packing and I came within uh, 7 to 28 days. <laughs> did you? And they, did they have to send you back a couple of times for being faulty? No refunds! And then eventually they gave up because they went, all oh, the replacements are faulty as well. <laughs> no refunds! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, a big hello. Oh, going to the dogs, Partick Hill Station, 57305 Northern Princess. Um, who says, I hate my body because I suffer body dysmorphia. I'm so sorry to hear. Uh, absolutely, body dysmorphia it's is crippling. Um, and it, it is so horrible to, to have. Help is out there, though. Uh, absolutely. Trains with Nick says, TARDIS on the blue brake van. I was hoping that it would blend in and people wouldn't spoil oh, it. Oh, but you didn't manage oh. it. Uh, funnily enough, um, I think. No, I don't think it's visible. No, it's not visible. <laughs> don't give people clues. <laughs> Valley's 56XX says my parents sent off the sea monkeys and got me instead. <laughs> <laughs> but do you see monkeys? Yeah. Sarah Davis says, wouldn't those special tokens be from packets of Cocoa Pops and they got sent the future cupboard monkey? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You used to advertise Cocoa Pops for a living. I did. They, they got rid of me, though. Yeah. She even turns the milk chocolatey. <laughs> and Mark Wilson says, the best memory of the Jenny Monday Club was the support we had watching the channel during COVID's early days when the country shut down. Much appreciated. Thank you. You You're are absolutely, absolutely welcome. welcome. Like we always said, you guys have been there for us, so we were going to be there for you. Absolutely. And, and John JMC it. is asking about videos. Are we doing videos? There will be in a minute. I have got them set up, but Jen keeps talking. Mm. And I've missed a comment from Southern Train Girl. These people are referring. Oh, stop, stop, stop. It says, if you're happy with the way you look, sod what everybody else thinks. Mm. It's. Um, yeah, uh, and that is true, but uh, unfortunately there are a lot of people for whom it's it's very difficult to be happy with the way you look. It's yeah. but like unfortunately say, the human condition. There. Absolutely. Ah, Les Cliff! Hello, you escaped Les. from... Hold on, the Jadlight Whittling Dungeon, Les. Les. Um, he's escaped. Big hello to Les. It's great to see you. Um, nice of you to turn up a bit late. Bit late. Gandalf! Bit late. A Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons, <laughs> nor is he early. He writes precisely when he means to. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Gandalf. Thanks, for standing for Gandalf. Oh, OK. You're welcome. All right, fair enough. Um, so, yeah, anyway, we were talking about uh, making 20,000 subs on YouTube. And don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, there's always time to subscribe and ring the bell and be the first to know about new videos as and when they get put up. And as well, it's um, a great idea to tickle the like button and share us to social media. It's a great way of showing your love for the channel. Um, yeah. Brian Bell says, the Monday Club highlight of the week. Um, Bri uh, 
Upwell and onwards is the earliest Jenny Kirk video I remember seeing is something about Hornby Teaks. Um, oh, I remember some of the teaks. We did do some videos on the Hornby Teak coaches. Mm -hmm. Um but um there's like there's like over 1400 videos. So um it's it, I lose track of what we've done. And I think it's not entirely unheard of that we do the same video twice. <laughs> We've um, not done the same video. No, I, I, I'm sure there is at least one where I filmed uh, a new version, uh, a new video, thought I was doing it for the first time. And then later on, when I was hunting around, YouTube suggested to me um, another video that I'd done about four years previously that was on the <laughs> same topic. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me, actually, now you yeah, mentioned yeah. it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and Iron Horse <laughs> Railway says, Oh snap, I just evolved into a spanner haver. Um, Trains with Nick says, Will you stop it? Trains with Nick says, I can't remember the first video I saw, but I found the channel via What's Neat This Week. Of course, big yeah. up to the What's Neat This Week posse with Sir Ken of Patterson. Ken's Always, a good man. Absolutely. And uh, um, I need to, I actually, I did promise him a video. I need to actually put that video together. Hint, hint. Put it down in my schedule. Um, Timber Surf says, "A up, a up, Timber Surf. Be careful, because you you might you might rouse the Gandalf." Yeah, that sounds like he's late. It only sounds like he's late, Gandalf. Okay. We might be late. A Monday clubber is never late, Toto Wagons. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, Gandalf. And yet, uh, Richard Swiderski, that uh, that TARDIS has been spotted, but I wonder whether people will spot the other one at some point. What other there one? is a, there is another TARDIS knocking about. My magic special effects there. That, that yeah, yeah. Even. Big hello to Partick Hill Station and Wixton Junction by Holmby Hall. It says oh, I've got I've got a long way to go. I've only got one subscriber. Oh my! It, it does come. Um, one is a good start. I have a feeling that my first subscriber was you. <laughs> Probably, yeah, so I yeah. can keep an eye on you. Yeah, yeah. My goodness. Up so. well and onward says, I kind of hate how YouTube suggests one of my most hated vids is my most popular. Once I get a new manner, that video is gone. No, 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 no. If it's picked one of your videos, it doesn't matter whether you like it or, or you don't. If it's picked it and is showing people it, let it show them because it will bring things in. Marin49 asks, when did they strip Bolton Trinity Street back to just Bolton? I'm guessing when Bolton, um, when Bolton Great lost. Moor Street Station finally closed, which would have been late 50s, maybe even um, uh, early 60s, it would have made the change. Uh, although I could, I could well believe that the name might have clung on into the 70s. Mm. Um, but certainly, probably before my time. I know I call it Bolton Trinity Street, but that's just because I'm contrary. Egg Rider says, the first JK video I saw was the Hornby Centenary Cake. Gosh. Oh, yes. That was a fun one. That was, that was like super fun. It's building a layout where you're not constrained by uh, regular layoutiness. Yeah. Right. So we're going to move over to showing some of your videos and see what projects you are up to. And uh, uh, if you want to share a video with us, do just share a hyperlink to it. Um, if you just send us a link to something like a YouTube video that must be your own video, please don't share other people's without their permission. Uh, and then we can play that. Or you can send us photographs of whatever project you've been up to. Do you want to turn the sound off? I do. I was trying to press yeah. the button and it wouldn't let me. Uh, Sarah Davis says they should name Bolton Station as Bolton Pigeon House Station. Trains with Nick says I imagine the name change was quite easy to do thanks to it being Bolt On. Oh. <laughs> 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 Leslie Gilpin Railway says Bolton Great Moor Street Terminus closed in the early 60s, I think. Yeah, I, th I think the last uh, regular trains were about 1958. And it closed for good by about 1963. It was open for, um, it was occasionally used for specials. And they had the coal drops alongside the station, which was still in use at the time. 
Robert Hall says TARDIS is behind the loco top left corner. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> so, well spotted. And also, yes, Ham Shackleton asks, has anyone seen the Mini Jenny on Weir Yard yet? Um, well, nobody has on Weir Yard, but certainly I am looking forward to people sharing their Mini Me's. I have seen, people have um, shared a few pictures of the Mini Me's that they've bought from Model U. And don't forget, you can buy a Mini Me from Model U. I am immortalised in plastic in any scale you like from N gauge through to 1 12th. I don't think anybody's quite dared buy a 1 12th scale figurine of me yet. Certainly I haven't. We've got an O-gauge one. Um, oh, interesting. Leslie Gilpin Railway says Trinity Street names would be dropped when the red totems were replaced by the modern image white signs. Mm. Ah. And Hot Dog Pilot Andy says we used to get a wink in those days. What do you mean? Yeah, the... I'll start doing the wink again, maybe, yeah. Um, so, um, Iron Horse Railway says, I believe my first Jenny video was her shunting Grove Street Yard and her endless collection of reviews. Oh, the reviews. We, yeah, yeah. I remember when I used to try and keep her to six minutes. And Chahalis Valley Rail Production says, the first JK video I saw was the three-part series from about four years ago where she was reviewing her locomotive collection. Yes, I remember that. All the locomotives. And a good night to you, Charlie of Partick Hill. Um, Thanks for coming along. Absolutely. Lovely to see you. And we've got Gwee and Reese Davies. Just seen your name in the uh, chat. Robert Hall says, oh, we already read that one out. Uh, Cameron Patterson as well. Um, and Iron Horse Railway says, one twelfth scale could use it to scare the cats out of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> probably Jenny, just... it's time for videos. So, first up, um, this is uh, says, Hi, Jenny and Zoe. Hello. Hello. This is just a short clip, 1 minute 14 seconds, of a Gronk 09024. It's class 09 Gronk, one of the speedier ones. At Berry it's on the 18th of distance. March 2023, passing through Platform 3. Gronk it up. up. Gronk it up. up. Gronk it up. Not, Not a, a cult. cult. Uh, For so, legal reasons, not so. So um, this has come from uh, Peter Jackson Cheadle Heath. So we're going to, uh, if you want to, um, I'm ready when you are. Press the button. Here we go. And a big thank you to Nuts and Bolts seventy seven, oh, who has you. very kindly donated twenty US dollars thank you on so the super much. chat. It says congrats on twenty thousand subs. Thank, thank you goodness. so much. I'm always blown away with you guys' generosity. Thank you. It is amazing. Really, Thank really you generous. so much. I do like a class 09. They're, they're basically, um, there was a number of class 09s built. <laughs> like that Iron Horse Railway. Not a cult. Uh, a number of class 09s were built originally. And they were for the southern region. The idea was that they could um, um, move quicker between sections. So clear sections quicker. Um, and that's really where they were designed for, but they've subsequently been found to be quite useful, especially on preserved railways, where they can reach uh, the uh, uh, line speed of um, the somewhat more sedate preserved railways quite well. So they can actually pull passenger trains. Um, so there we are, gronk, gronk, gronk. Yeah, it's a nice gronky gronk. So it's running around the Pullman train by the looks of it. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Thank you very really much. Really enjoyed that. So it's from Always Peter a pleasure. Jackson Cheadle Heath. Do you want to just check with the camera? I am. Um, I've got to press the buttons first. Yeah. Oh, it is working. She's a buggy, you know, guys. So um, thank you very much for sharing that thank with us. Thank you very much. Uh, ben Cooper asks, how can I send a video that's not on YouTube? Um, You'll if have it's on to... a different uh, server... Like, well, uh, like Vimeo, is it Vimeo or Vimeo, PeerTube, whatever you want, as long as it's not Pornhub. You can't, you can't <laughs> send it as an attachment because it will. Um, it will cause us so many problems. Absolutely. They, we, yeah. Basically, we've got this uh, set up here, and it just works. Yeah, we basically <laughs> run out of bandwidth. We cannot play a video um, we, from um, emails at the same time as streaming it. it just, we just, we just don't know why. We can stream a video from YouTube, but trying to stream it via email makes it all go weird. Yeah. So we've got now, uh, when it, it pops up, this is from Philip Page. 
It says, hi Jenny and Zoe, a shorter version of my Flying Scotsman video at Barry. Was this the day where Hornby were there filming? Um, Wouldn't surprise me if you pressed the button. I didn't realise that Hornby was there. I would have known I'd have gone over and said hello. You do love the flying Scotsman, don't I you, do. Jenny? Not it's your really. favourite train. No, it's not. Yes, it but is. I tell you what, they've got a good turnout there. The weather's nice yeah. as well. Flying Scotsman always brings people in because they recognise the name. It was funny, really, because it was only made famous kind of after withdrawal by um, Simon Pegler uh, with the, the tour of America and Australia really made it famous, famous. Mm. But, you know, I guess before it was, um, it was like super famous, um, it would have been stuff like Mallard would have been like the super famous locomotive. Mm. So, um, oh, it's shiny. It's a very shiny one. Yeah, look at that. Somebody's really polished it up. Be a shame if that got dirty, wouldn't it? <laughs> Apparently, the Class 09 is a sports edition Gronk. Ah, the sports Gronk. Does it have a slide back sunroof? It's a Gronk GT. Oh, yes. <laughs> with special gear with electric windows <laughs> and a blow punked radio. <laughs> we should get a Gronk and then do it up with uh, 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 ground neon lights. <laughs> well, blue a, lights underneath. And a massive subwoofer. And it would just go grunk, 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 grunk. <laughs> Alan Pegler, yeah. I don't know why I said si I think I meant si I, I'm, I'm getting Alan Pegler and Simon Pegg mixed up. Yes, absolutely right, up well and onwards. <laughs> it's just a very shiny locomotive. Mm. Shiny, shiny. Trains, kits, etc. says, last time I saw it, it was a, I, I was a kid and it was at Thangothlin for some reason. Oh, look, there's a Class 08 in the background. Grunk, 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 grunk it up. up. Grunk, grunk it up. up. Gronk, gronk it up. up. Not, Not a, a cult. cult. It gets out. The Gronks get everywhere. The Gronk is the best. Absolutely. I've been in that shed down the back there. We've got a guided tour. There is some videos on my channel of all that. <laughs> Leslie Gibbon says it's been <coughs> polished within an inch of its rust. Yes. Um, Iron Horse, are you buffering? Oh, no. It's buffeting. Oh, buffeting. Oh, I've that's been right in then. that signal box as well. It's very interesting. And behind the signal box, you can't see it, but there's actually a Class 07. Marin49 says, I remember the signal men at Burnden Park signal box watching the football on the staircase. Uh, most of the time there'd be a loco park there too. Yeah, probably the, the station pilot. They'd sort of ease it round and um, um, make the most of the free view of Burnden Park as was. So this is... A, a, a Berry Bolton Street station is always worth a visit. Yeah. If you get an opportunity... Uh, East Lanks Railway is a, a great little line. I have to ask, what are those uh, baffles on the side of it for? Because I'm assuming Smoke it doesn't... deflectors. Right, because I was assuming that it didn't need to blink right. as like a horse would. Right, the <laughs> idea behind those is that uh, as it runs along, uh, they deflect the, the, the air that's, that's, that it's going through and right. push it up, <laughs> and that takes the exhaust smoke up right. and makes sure that it doesn't uh, impede the driver's vision. Right. And they're called smoke deflectors because they deflect the smoke. Cool. So, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, that is a beautiful locomotive. But I think I don't like... I, I'm not keen because of all the hype. Up well and onwards says, Fun fact, Alan Pegler helped save the Festiniog as well. And, and uh, Flying Scotsman's fame was kind of because of the mix-up of the Loco's name and the LNER's Famous Express. Right. <laughs> Valley's 56XX says, what's that green engine then? <laughs> uh, is that Edward? Mm. And Stevie Film says... No, Percy was the green one, wasn't he? Uh, Henry was as well. Ah. Stevie Film says, should be damn shiny at 4.2 million quid overhaul. <laughs> and the thing is, how much of it's a new engine? The original tyres are at uh, Fawley Hill for a start. <laughs> um, but it does make you wonder... Probably be cheaper to make a new one and um, just um, like put this in a museum. Are we in a ship of Theseus position here? Yeah. How much of it's actually the original triggers thing? broom? Yeah. <laughs> Southern Train Girls is not a fan of Flying Scotsman either. Like, don't get me wrong, beautiful locomotive, but I don't really see what all this sort of like mega hype is. <laughs> um. Trains with Nick says the unlucky tug has a fantastic video on the Flying Scotsman's visit to the US. Certainly, I mean, that's just like you look at it, and it's like one of the wildest ideas ever. Let's take this big steam train and just run it across America. 
and then Australia. Um, ben Cooper uh, says, would you much prefer Duchess of Hamilton on the main line than Scotsman? I, I have no preference in that respect. It's not that I dislike I have a preference. It. I need to see the Mega Gronk. We all know the heightness. They've yeah. got one. They just won't let us see it. Thank you so much for that. Would you Thank like you to very check much. that the uh, camera has come up? Yeah, go on. Then. Trains, kits, etc. says they have a spare middle cylinder block hidden somewhere if you want to start on making one. Yeah, it's Ooh. hidden next to the Mega Gronk. I've seen <laughs> it. Yeah, it's <laughs> Okay. Um, but yeah, Hot Dog Pilot Andy says it's a pit of money that would be best served on other locos. Um, I, I think I think the um, the debate on this is possible because it's part of the National Railway Museum collection. It's money <coughs> that's come out of their budget. If it was a private individual, you'd say it's up to them what they spend their money on. But um, I think it's because it's seen as public money. I think that there's a little bit of grumbling that it's like, well, why lavish all that money on that when there's other locomotives in the national collection that um, would be better served by being overhauled? Yeah, um, there is a bit of an argument with that. Yeah, like the Midland Spinner, the um, Hardwick, Constantine, um, uh, locomotives such as that really would be nice to see uh, back out and about. Um, the Jones Goods. Trains UK says, Hi, I saw your video of O gauge retaining wool. You used O gauge Metcalf kits. Thanks, I will use it as well. You're welcome. And it's one of the things that I've said over and over again is that actually there's certain things where you can be quite flexible with yeah. the scale. Um, trees and bushes and stuff as well. Um, you know, it, it's multi scale. Um, but the Metcalf retaining walls, uh, the O gauge ones, actually quite good. Um, in um, uh, O gauge and likewise I think the N gauge ones would probably work in double O as well so there's a lot of scope to be quite flexible and I think as well one of the things that the TT scale buildings might be good at if you want forced perspective try putting some TT scale buildings yeah. right in the background yes right next up we have from uh Charlie at Particle Station. Oh yes, it says good morning Zoe and Jenny. I think, Hello. I think he sent this in the morning. Uh, thanks so much for taking my call. Oh yes, because we had him on the... Um, yeah, we did. Yeah, well, we, we, have, we perhaps we'll do a call in next week. I've got to be careful because I, I do have to be at work. Like, I have to get up at half midnight. It's really quite grim. Um, it says, thanks so much for taking my call. It really brings added value when you can bring in a roaming reporter. Yes. Happy to contribute any time. And it was much appreciated. It was really Thank nice you. to talk to you. Um, so I've attached the video <laughs> of our visit to HR Trains and Toys in Tampa. I didn't know there was one in Tampa. I've been to Tampa. I didn't know there was, a, there was a model shop. It's a fabulous store and this will give you an idea of the prices. So look closely as I try and capture the sticker prices. Excellent. Uh, so, so thank you so much. Now this is a 13 minute video. We're not going to show it all as you'd expect. So we'll dip Go in now. Um, We're going to gonna jump in. Well, sorry, I love the pictures on the model. Yeah, it looks that like is great. The green makes me think it's a co-op. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to jump inside. Yeah, let's get inside. Oh, this is well stuff. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, so that's like the wooden <sighs> stuff. Not all of us. Some of that was lying. Evergreen wasn't it? plastic. Yeah. What I like about this is it's got something for every age range yeah. in every pocket. So we've got stuff here for the scratch builders. This is all good stuff. Plastruct. Oh, good call. Um, but the the wooden stuff that we saw as well, always great. If you've got a small person in tow that you need to appease with toys. <laughs> Cameron Patterson says, "I'm off work tomorrow." <sighs> I'm not. Well, good I've got you. to edit all of Jenny's videos. I've got, get a day off work. I've got to go to Avonmouth because I stupidly said yes when I was asked. Would, would, would you do us a favour? Yes. So that, that, go to Newton Abbott on What Wednesday. would you use this stuff for, Jen? You, you scratch build things. So you can right. make like... Um, um, really great if you're building something like an industrial complex for right. pipe work, Sounds good. Gas, trees. Um, there's bridges um yeah and it's extruded plastic moldings <laughs> in the shape of like girders and stuff really really ah, good so, stuff that you you would find a real fiddler to try and hand build yourself yeah yeah and then we've got some extra bits and bobs here lovely wheels um some oh rio grande there. yeah 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 
So this is the LGB oh. section. Um, like the really big stuff that you'd have out in your garden or your yard. Oh um, my goodness, these look wonderful. The colours is great. Mm. But this is nice. and I'd love to go and have a good browse in a shop like this. Yeah. Is uh, LGB Lionel Garden? No, I think it's an Aus Austrian company. I don't know what it stands nice. for. Um, Since it was in the area with Lionel. Something um, Garden Barn or something like ah. that. It's, like, um, it's not large. But, oh, I like that. That is special, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like tunnel portals, um, turntable. Yeah. Lots wow. and lots of stuff. I get they might be second hand up there because they're not in the boxes. <gasps> oh! Oh. <coughs> oh, the detail on that is amazing. Nice little diorama. Oh, that's a great bridge. Uh, it looks like it's made from uh, aluminium, extruded aluminium. What price have we got on there? Can anybody see? I uh, couldn't. Uh, ben, that's fine. Don't worry about that. No worries. <laughs> Steve Jones says, sorry, hi, Jen's credit card. Yeah. Ah. John Copping says it's LGB is Lehman Garden Barn. So Garden Barn, I was close. Oh, look at those buildings. Those are wonderful. They're like the um, the Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> LGB now owned by Marklin, says John Copping. Right. LMS poster boards. Oh, Brian Horse. That's and an it, interesting. I don't know. That's an interesting. Um, interesting. Great, yeah. um, uh, UK stuff in the. I mean, how big is um, how big is UK outline modelling in the US? I don't know, but uh, Iron Horse just said the LGB section, LGB train section, or LGBT, if you will. Like, <laughs> hey, what you like? American flyer? It's got no wings. I mean, this is a really well-stocked model shop. This is shop. amazing. Oh, that's nice. Can we? I can't quite read the prices, but it's a, it's a, it's a four six four. So that's a. It's an Amstrad. Baltic. Is that a Baltic wheel <laughs> arrangement? <laughs> woodland Scenics. Um, great range of Woodland Scenics. Rail track cleaning kit. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So I'm going to jump it on a little bit. Uh, let's see if we've got any other sections. Oh, 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 oh. I just saw something amazing in the thumbnails. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. What oh, is that? That is cool. So are these, I think, the little um, things that Woodland Scenics produce yeah. to show you how to use all of, your, of their products. Soundtracks! We do love a bit of soundtracks. Yeah. Big up to George Bogota and everybody at the Soundtracks potty, Posse. I nearly said potty. In the soundtracks potty. <laughs> uh, hot dog pilot Andy says it's a Hudson, but I I, I thought Baltic four six four, a Hudson's what they call it in America. So actually yes, it's a Hudson, but it's a Baltic tank in the Milwaukee, but Hudson on the New York Central. I love those tiny mm. buildings as well. They're great. They are quite nice. Titchy Train Group. I love this it. This has actually got really broad this is range incredible. of stuff. I mean, I'm seeing a lot of products that I'm familiar with and a lot of other products that I'm not... Oh, UK Outline! Second... Is that second hand or new? Hornby! They've wow. got a Hornby! What make is that? Hater Genesis. $17. Second time around. So that's second hand. So they do do a lot of second hand as well as Whoa. new. So, um... That was great. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Great to see that. It's lovely to see stuff uh obviously i'm i'm really quite impressed by the amount of uk outline stuff as well um the german flow uh so, so, <laughs> sorry if I'm, I'm pronouncing that in a german accent uh it's like the Fl german flow hey jenny i assume you already heard about merklin tricks releasing a ho 187 scale model of flying scotsman is there a chance you will review it I have heard about it. Looks good. Gage Master did show off the um, the EP of it. Looks amazing, but I probably won't review it because it's like about four or five hundred quid. It's very expensive. Heritage says, "Hello. I'm sorry I'm late. Only just got settled in the house. I'm cat sitting. Hope the stream is going well." Well, hey, Monday Clubber is never late, Frodo Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, Thanks Gandalf. Gandalf. And big hello to uh, EC Idaho as well. Says picked up a few UK locos and passenger cars from Goodwill. Oh, nice. wow. Um, no, trains, kits, etc. Baltic. 
Um, it's uh, four six two is Pacific. Now, there's some in the UK. There's some some um, nicknames for wheel arrangements that you'd be familiar with, like Atlantic, Prairie, Mogul, uh, Pacific. But then there's others like Baltic, which is four six four. Um, Adriatic, which is 264, but for some reason they don't get tend to get referred to as that. Jubilee, which is a 444, I think. I think 444 is Jubilee. Um, Six-wheeler, um, 060s. Ten-wheeler is a 460. Uh, Decapod, you might have heard of that, um, for anything with ten driving wheels. Um, seems to be universal between like a, a, a 210 and an 010. Uh, but then also consolidation. We do. I think we do use consolidation in the Americans UK, which is 280. Uh, 156 Andrew asks, Jenny, did you enjoy Easter? Yes, we enjoyed the chocolate yeah. very well. We had uh, my parents visited. And that yes, was we nice. did. Yeah, yeah. We went out for a delicious meal. Oh, we did. Yes, actually. Went out for a meal at a lovely little uh, restaurant called Chow Babies. Mm. Stupid name for an Italian restaurant, but a lovely Italian restaurant. Wonderful food. Yeah, it's in Bolton, if you're wondering. Yeah. If you do go there, um, there's a guy called Brendan, um, and he'll confuse the hell out of him. But he's the maitre d', or well, one of the maitre d's. And you say, oh, hello, Jenny sent me. He'd be like, who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jenny yeah. Kirk. No, uh, no, and interesting, <laughs> Worthing, Worthington Model Railway says you will see UK outline more in Canada. I can imagine. So there's a lot of expats over there. Yes. So what we've got up next is Lifestyle Unleashed, who has sent us a uh, video from the Harrogate Model Railway Exhibition. Excellent. So this could be fun. So this is from Lifestyle Unleashed. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have a look at this. It's a half an hour long. I have. Put, I am going to put the link into the chat, and I'll say right now that uh, we're not going to see all of it. But if you want to have a look at the whole thing, it's uh, going to be linked in the chat. And Partick Hill Station says, check out the last few minutes of that video, the one um, in the model shop. It says, I had a chat with Santa. Cool. Ooh, we'll, have, we'll, have, we'll have a look at that afterwards. This is, I think we've seen Spilsby, haven't we? I'm pretty sure we've seen this one at other events. Because I recognise the name anyway. Which one is this? What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> Richard Swinesky says, Tell them my Jenny sent you, they'll kick you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> this does look nice. Look, there, there's the Sterling single. It looks like a Sterling single. I do recognise this as well. I'm sure we filmed I think this we've seen at it. Uh, Statfold Barn, and I think it was at Ali Pali as well. <laughs> it may um, well have been. Nice, though. Yeah, really I, good. I think this was at um, Statfold Barn and at Ali Pali as well. It's a very but it nice is a lovely, there. lovely layout. And some great modelling on these. Trains with Nick says, Spelsy was at Statfold Barn. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Richard's Adventure says, Jenny, I was standing next to you at London Festival Rail Railway Model in London when you test oh, your local the on the test one, track. Jenny. I had my two diesels in my hand at the time. Yes. Jenny, you've, you've missed the cutest thing. Okay. I'm going to try and bring it back to the... Just stop messing about and we'll see right. it. See it in a second. That you've threshing... Got can I just say the threshing machine? <laughs> Love that. Uh, Ransom's threshing machine. Um, very rare these days. Uh, certainly even rarer to see them in, in functioning condition. Um... How oh, cute is that? That is so It's a cool. rail motor. I love it. Is that a... Uh... Choo-choo. Yeah, they, they, once upon a time, they were they they were a reasonably common. I know that Lancashire and Yorkshire Railway had a number, and I'm guessing it's either the Great Northern Railway or... Um, I'm thinking Great Northern Railway, yeah. They're so cute. It's mm. tiny. I love they it. They are, actually. There it goes. <laughs> Choo-choo. Upwell and Onward says, a coffee pot rail car. Absolutely. There we go. <laughs> I it, it is really quite nice. It's tiny. I love it. Certainly an interesting little We've model. We've got to get one, Nicole. Absolutely. That is true. Please so, click on like. It does help. Okay. We're oh, going to have a look. At oh, sorry. I, I just uh, changed. Yeah, oh, go back. Uh, Anneli, um, oh my goodness! Look at that lighthouse. Oh, that is a good. Uh, uh, look at the cliffs and stuff. The yeah. top. What's interesting is that the railway is at a higher level than the front, so you've got yeah. the cliffs, and that is an interesting scenery technique. Normally, you'd have the railway 
at a lower point and the scenery going up but this is really really nice i love those cliffs they're so well done so good um <laughs> trains kits etc says if you keep saying jenny sent me at every restaurant you visit statistically you should get a free meal at some point <laughs> yeah some kind of custard pie to the face <laughs> And seriously, though, if you if you are in the area, uh, do tr drop in for for that restaurant. It's very good. I can recommend the barbecue ribs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, stick with the minestrone. I am so loving this. Look that at looks that. so good. With the the river coming out underneath oh. the, um, the the viaduct. Oh, this is amazing work. Yeah. Um, Valleys fifty six XX says lots of rail motors ran around southern Wales. That is, that so is lovely. It looks real. Mm. I say this a lot, but that looks real. I'm sorry, it does. Some really nice tree work there as well. And I like the, the dramatic change in topography. Yeah. Sorry, topography is my word of the day. I'm going to wear it out. I really shouldn't have got you that word, word of the day. Uh, oh, that roll. looks nice. Look at that. That's, that. That's gone together nice, isn't it? With the little tyre tracks as well around the farm. Uh, the the scenery on this, the Coos. grass and stuff, really is nice. See them, see coos. Mm. I love the different coloured buildings as well. This is a lovely layout. But um, you want to? We're gonna have to jump on. I'm gonna jump really far on now. Let's see what we've got. Oh, we're beaching up. Well, this is uh, Upwell Base. How oh, on earth do you just know? <laughs> I've seen this layout before. Uh, I happen uh, to know. I think it's Upwell Basin or so, or Outwell Basin, something like that. Um, John Copping says, barbecue ribs, great, thanks, now I'm hungry. You're welcome. Yeah, go to Chow Baby, um, Chow Babies in, um, it's in Edgerton, end of Bolton. Tell them I sent you, they'll go, who? Uh, and then say that I recommended the barbecue ribs. Oh, is that a I J70 or is it a Y6? This, this, this Depends like, on whether oh. it's six or four wheeler. But yeah, it's a beautiful layout. It really is. Shedmouth Junction says that's a beautiful layout. And it really uh, is. It really I is. love them slightly muted colours as well. Because yeah, yeah. England isn't bright. It's quite muted. Well, it depends on what the sun's doing. Yeah, but for the most of the point, most time, Ooh, it's look, quite look, muted. Look, look, look. The brick pillbrox is nice. Mm. So that place is this <laughs> sometime in the 1940s. Mm. Before 1940, I'm just looking. Yeah, there's no BR livery things. So this is sometime between, I guess, 1940 and 1948. With a J70. Um, lovely, lovely model. If you get a chance, get one from uh, um, Model Rail magazines. Right, we're going to have to move on. This was wonderful. Like I say, it's a half hour long video, so do have a look at it mm. if you want to see more, because there's a lot to see. But, but Jen, if you could press and see buttons, please. Okay, well, look, just um, check that uh, the camera's well, come yeah. up. There we go. Oh, is it? you working today? Don't. No, you jinxed it now. You jinxed it now. You're and Chihalis oh. Valley Rail Productions, it is the locomotive that Toby was based on. Uh, I believe that the Reverend W. Audrey spent some time um his his vicarage was in that area for some time and during that time uh the uh inspiration for the characters of toby henrietta and mavis uh, were formed so this is mark wilson with his time machine it says um paddington station 23rd of november 1983 at 11 minutes past 6 a.m. That's awfully specific. That's because uh, they used a time machine to get there. We so, know what he's yeah, doing so now. That's, that's what the readout on the DeLorean was saying. It says 50041 Bulwark was involved in a Penzance to Paddington overnight sleeper train derailment having run through a 25 mile per hour restricted point section at 65 miles per hour. Miraculously, only three minor injuries and the driver escaped without a scratch, although shaken and in shock. Oh. Um, yeah, I remember this. Um, believed to be a braking issue. Um, and he's managed to replicate it. So that's the photograph 
propped up there of the real incident. Ah, right, okay. So, so if that's you bring the... this up on the screen, so oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> so that's the photograph there in the background. In the foreground is this model. The the fifty oh four one there on its side is the model. But in the background, <laughs> that photograph propped up on the platform is the real thing. So and they've got the fire brigade. Do you remember when they used to dress like that? No. With the plastic trousers and the no. uh, double-breasted jackets, which I'm guessing were fireproofed. And there it is. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it's the locomotive on its side. He's even managed to get the, the people standing around. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, my goodness. It's just the attention to detail is incredible. This is, like, wow. I, I do need to see these. We need to, at some point, arrange a visit to see Mark Wilson. There it is, in, in close up. And it's actually, I mean, when you look at the detail on the model, because um, that's yeah. all the underside detail. So that is a detailed... Um, probably a Lima model that is gone to town with to get that level of detail to be able to do that. So, really interesting. Yeah, because when you think about it, you, you don't get that on the bottom of your standard locomotive. James Pett says they don't have plastic trousers anymore. I don't know, actually. Um, but yeah, up well and onwards, the fireman's uniform reminds me of Fireman Sam's early series. Yeah. Um, yeah, um... The firemen used to dress differently in the early 80s, and that's the photograph of the real thing. See, look, they're wearing the plastic trousers. Oh, my God, he's got it all right. Absolutely. I mean, the attention to detail is incredible. Oh, my goodness. Apparently, the engine was still running. Uh, one of the platform staff actually had to climb into the cab and hit the emergency stop because the, <laughs> uh, the driver was so shaken up. Which it would be. I mean, if you'd just, just come through that, you'd be very shaken up. But yeah. it's interesting because you can see... Look look at that. The the spigot where the bogey would attach. And look at the way that the cables that have obviously been sheared off are hanging down. Even yeah. It's got even got everything right for gravity. <laughs> the detail on that is incredible. Oh, oh, I recognise some of those bits he's used. <laughs> Some of that is sprue from 3D prints from West Hill Wagon Works. Oh. Right. right, you see to the left uh, where you've got, it almost looks like those metal get, yeah, that there. Those are the sprues off the 3D prints. When you get a 3D printed <laughs> model, you, you know the stuff because it's on the mini-me. Keep is, everything because oh. you can always use it. Oh, brilliant. That is just, oh. Raymond Legg says, plastic trousers, chafe tubers. Um, they're, they're really sweaty as well. If you've ever worn them, they turn. They, if you're wearing um, anything underneath, like jeans, they just become saturated in sweat. It's quite horrible, actually. Um, yeah, a Stevie film says the poor driver had only the handbrake, which only works on one axle. Yeah, um, they believe that there may have been ice formed in uh, one of the brake uh, valves or something, um, and. Uh, they tried to pin the blame on the driver, but the Class 50s and the coaching stock were notorious for uh, braking issues caused by icing, I believe. So it was actually rather unfair to blame the driver, because quite simply, that doesn't happen because the driver was negligent. I, no. In all honesty with you, it's like you, you'd... To do that deliberately, you'd have to try to cock it up. Yeah. So I, I, I'm inclined to believe the driver. I get a bit angry with people that do that. It's like, oh, you must have been to blame. Why? Yeah, I used to work for a company that was very good at that. Yeah. Why must they be to blame? Yeah, basically, if, if they can blame an individual, it's like they can just um, uh, not face up to fundamental problems. Iron Horse, that's a good point there. You know you're really into modelling when you start to recognise sections of sprue. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, yes. And yes, Wickstone Junction by Hobby Hall, it really did happen. Um, and the locomotive, funnily enough, was rebuilt. Um, strangely enough, because the way it slid on the track um, and didn't particularly hit anything, the locomotive wasn't actually badly damaged. Um, they put it back on its bogies, put it back on the track and towed it away. And it was mostly superficial panelling that wow. needed repair work. Um, everything else was absolutely fine. Hyrian says, sorry, I'm late. A Monday clubber is never late, Frodo Baggins. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Thanks, Gandalf. Thank you, Gandalf. 
But yeah, I mean that is great. I mean even down that. At this point, I can't effect, tell if that's a photo or not. A just incredible work. It here. is. It really is. Thank you so much for sending that in. So thank you for um, Mark Wilson's uh, weekly trip in his time machine. <laughs> Fire up the DeLorean. We're going back to 1983. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, we've still got a huge amount of videos. We always do. So I'm going to uh, pick one more. Okay. And then we're going to uh, have to... Well, what's the oldest one that we've not shown? Uh, we've already shown one from, uh, from those. So we're going to... Because we get several. Uh, right, Nick, I am going to... Nick Beard. They're just yeah. pictures. Okay. So um, this is Nick from Bleston High Level. So hi guys, here's my latest video on my trip to the Brighton Toy and Model Museum on Saturday with my friend Charles. I've concentrated on the train aspect but the place is full of all kinds of wonderful toys and models of yesteryear. Well worth the visit on a train running day. I didn't know there was a toy and train museum in Brighton. We've been a few times to Brighton. That's coming from YouTube so jump that and drop that off and here we go. So I can actually grab the uh, video you see. Absolutely. So there we Beep, go. Boink, boof. Uh, so um, if you want to make can that. I get the. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here we are. Oh, Hornby O gauge. There we are. There's a Baltic tank for. No, uh, not a Baltic. Um, yeah, Baltic tank 444. <laughs> Look there, 444. <coughs> I don't know why they went for that wheel arrangement because in Britain that was quite unusual. Um, I don't think there were many 444 uh, locomotives. Oh, I love the, the cars, biscuits and stuff. The, some really nice stuff. And of course, those models pre-1923 to have the London and North oh Western Railway branding. Some really nice stuff here. Yeah. Hyrian says, I'm saving up for my first train set. Still watching YouTube videos to get more information. That's a, that's a really good idea. It is a good idea. way to do it. These are very nice. Mm. Uh, Harry Sedgwick says on November the 23rd, 1983, a sleeper train hauled by number 5041 Bullock yeah, derailed on the approach to Paddington Station due to excessive speed through crossover. <gasps> Look how shiny that is. That is nice. Oh. This is very nice. That looks like Ace Trains, I think it is O gauge, three rail O gauge. It's it's like built in the old style, but it's it's four 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 new. is not a Baltic, says James Pets. Oh sorry, four six I'm um, uh, yes, yes, absolutely right. Four 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 is a Jubilee. Um or a Reading, depending on which country you're in. Yeah, sorry, I get confused. Uh four six four is a Baltic. I love these style wagons here. Which ones, sorry? The, the, the ones that have this... The, the uh, Pullmans, the coaches. The, they, yeah, they have that... Uh, uh, how can I say it? They, they've got an interesting uh, They've got a really good to vibe to them. Yes. Mm, it's a really nice colour scheme. I'm James Pett says, I visited that museum in 2009. Oh, Hornby Double O! Oh, and look at the breakdown crane. I, I had all of this stuff, just about. Yeah. And there's the Barnstable with the Pullman set. And the slightly the too city, short The Delta. Holby Double O City Station, quite quite rare. Oh, the Canadian Pacific Caboose and uh, Loco. Some really nice stuff there. Look at that Southern Railway one in. Uh, that's actually a repair box. Bassett Whoa. Loco. Oh. Uh, Southern Train Girls says that was Ace Trains Coronation and Darstead Brighton Bell set. Uh -huh. And yes, Richard Swiderski, it does look a great place to visit. Bassett Loco is the main move for German made semi scale models. Alright. Mm -hmm. Now it's used for whatever Hornby's pumping out, isn't it? They use, no, they, uh, used, it, they used it for the steampunk, steampunk, and there was a lot of hoo ha about that. People said it was disrespectful to the brand. But it's their brand. Yeah. I'm sorry, but um, I have that uh, this view. Mm. If you own a brand, you can do what you want with it. Yeah. The same thing I, I would say anyway, to... Anyway, look, thank you so much for yeah. sharing that with us. The same thing I'd say to uh, Star Trek fans, and I am a Star Trek fan. Yes, if you Paramount are. Paramount to, tomorrow decides that uh, Mr. Spock is now orange uh, and a cat and likes lasagna. So, I'm sorry, but he's a Garfield now. You don't get to say what people do with their own yeah. stuff. Oh, interesting. So, Jane Charlesworth, big hello to you, says the Toy Museum is right under the station in Brighton. That's why I've missed it. I right. never thought to go and look under the station. 
I made a beeline down into um, the um, the actual city. That'll do it. I love Brighton, but we should go back there for a long weekend. Start, stay at the um, Downs Hotel in Wooding Dean. Don't a, tell people where we're going to be. I'll, I'll book it all up so you can't get in. And then they'll laugh. It's, it's they'll, fairly when, inexpensive and just a bus you ride go away down, from the centre. When you go down to there and you're looking in and they're all out, like, hanging out the windows laughing, going, ah, we got here first. <laughs> Can I, can I just say that um, the, the Downs Hotel in Woodingdean, just outside Brighton, is a really good place to stay because it's not that expensive. It's like a pub that's got uh, rooms, uh, ensuite rooms upstairs that you can you can hire, um, and it's on a direct bus service into Brighton, and that's where we always stay. We should book and go there. Okay, Shall yeah, we do, do that? Yeah, sure. Right, our final one. We're going to jump this in. Because we've got a little bit of time. Oh, is this, so this the is from John JMC? It's John Alice JMC. And Nesta, fitted with DCC sound and a stay alive. So I've put the sound on for this one. Okay. So quite a quite a feat what he's done here. We saw, we saw these at Stafford Bar. We did. Very, That's what I'm saying. It's quite a very feat. impressive. And it's like I said, if he can't fit sound in something, it is impossible to fit sound in that. This is a lovely layout as well. Look at the way, look at the ground. Like, where's it from the ground? That, the texturing is amazing. Really, really nice. Here we go. Good use of the Pico uh, Girder Bridge. Mmm. And that's got sound in it. That's amazing. Have you checked the sound coming through? It's got a stay alive as well. Oh, I like that, where it kind of goes with, with the higher ground in front. This is a nice little layout, actually. Mm. Ah, the NCE panel there at the front. Again, those muted colours, really, really well done. Iron Horse says, John JMC is the audio Yoda. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he is the guru. So, John JMC, you are the guru of sound. So is there just the red one or did you show the other one? Oh, he did. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, Worthington Model Railway. Uh, he's got sound and a stay alive. Can I just put that out there? Not just sound, but a stay alive as well. And it has, there's no cab to hide it in. And when you see how he's done it, it's like, wow. It's like he has to rebuild. It's the air team of models. No, it is the guru of he sound. modified the bay. Yeah. Look at that, that's just amazing. And it's got people in it. <laughs> Where particles is with the driver. Well in this one, there is one. <laughs> and that's one of the Pico um um Festiniog Railway uh that was amazing. thingies. I absolutely astounded. Always incredibly impressed. But yeah, John JMC at Digi Trains, if you need sound in something. He is the guru. If it can be done, he will do it. Um, so, Jen, before we go, do we have a sponsor today? We absolutely do. Roker Prototype Models. The Monday Club comes in association with Roker Prototype Models, where detail, accuracy and value for money go hand in hand. With their debut model of Safepack Auto Racks wowing model railroaders alike, now is your chance to order these in road names and configurations to accurately reproduce auto rack workings from 1974 to the present day on your model railroad. Order today from rocamodels.com and see the full range for yourself. And there we go. Thank you so much to Roka. Absolutely. And Roka prototype models, certainly some great models. If you model a US outline, Absolutely. then do check them out at their website because they are fabulous models. And we did do a full review on the yeah. Santa Fe tank cars and the auto racks that you saw in the uh, I'm still impressed spot. with those. My goodness. Absolutely. So it just got time for us to thank everybody for coming. A 20,000 sub special. Please like, share, and if you haven't already done so, then do please consider subscribing and ring that bell to be the first to know about all of the great content that's coming out. This Wednesday's video will be a full bargains, no, my bargains, on the TMC sale, <laughs> particularly the uh, two Ransoms and Rapier Backman Cranes 
at better than half price and with TMC the price you see is the price you pay over £100 because over £100 for an order the postage is free in the UK and um, so we'll be doing that having a good close look over them and actually they are great models and we're never going to see them again at the prices this low seriously if Bankman do another run of these they will be super expensive so if you really really undenard over getting yourself one of the Backman Ransoms and Rapier Cranes, you can do no worse than get yourself over to TMC before they sell out of these models. But until next time, you guys take great care of yourself and thank you for the generosity of all the people who very, very kindly sent money through uh, PayPal.me and also through Super Chat. It's, uh, I'm always so, so humbled by your generosity. Stay safe, happy modeling, take care. Bye for now. Hey, you, you got the wink. <laughs> <laughs> Do another one just in case. Bye bye. The train now departing is the 2105 service to Bolton Trinity Road, stopping at Grove Street Yard. Minneth Tatis. Tatis Neweth. The unnamed layout. A very loud sound. And of course, taking a detour to Eindhoven for no particular reason before heading on to Bolton Trinity Road. That's the 2105 service to Bolton Trinity Road. If you go up to the loft today you're sure of a big surprise. If you go up to the loft today you'll never believe your eyes. For every train there ever was Let's gather there together because today's the day that Jenny does the Monday Club. <coughs> Good night. You know what you need on this? What? A sound that goes... <laughs> oh, the other one as well. I remember Ford Capri's in the early 80s used to have a horn. <laughs> Let go. <laughs> I remember those as well.
Take care, everyone. Good night.